Do not deceive you. This is a 911 being driven off-road in the desert. No dream. This is reality. This is the 911 Dakar. And if you're wondering why Porsche would build such a thing, well, the answer is very simple. It's because they can. <laughs> Look at this. I'm driving around the freaking Sahara, not in an SUV in a sports car. This is madness. The 911 Dakar is based on the GTS, so it uses the same 3-litre turbocharged flat-six engine, makes 480 horsepower and 570 newton metres of torque. And that means it's fast. Porsche say it will do 0 to 62 in 3.2 seconds, but of course that's on tarmac with launch control. But get this, there's a second launch control mode specifically for rallying and since I'm doing a bit of rallying today it's only right we give it a go you know in the name of science so the normal launch control allows for a little bit of wheel spin to get you away on the tarmac but in rally mode or in off-road mode the rally launch control system allows for 20% more wheel spin to get you away quicker on dirt, sand, or wet grass. Put on the brake, put on the accelerator, send. Oh yes. On sand, the 911 Dakar launches to 62 in around five seconds. That's only slightly slower than the standard Carrera can manage on tarmac in perfect conditions. I might be a little bit in love with this thing, but if you're thinking Porsche might have gone absolutely mental to build it, no, it's actually not outside the company's DNA. They've done this kind of thing before. Cast your mind back to 1983. Legendary racer Jackie Ix, a four-time Le Mans winner, convinces Porsche to build a 911 with all-wheel drive in order to enter the Paris-Dakar, an 11,000-kilometer long rally recognized as one of the most extreme on the planet. Porsche duly obliges and builds the Carrera 3.2 4x4 Paris-Dakar, codenamed 953. But it's not plain sailing. Ix and his crew, Claude Brasseur and René Met and met with resistance from the established competition, with very few taking a rally-optimized 911 seriously. But the idea wasn't as ridiculous as their rivals might have thought. The car was several hundred kilograms lighter than the big all-terrain vehicles it went up against. It delivered an astonishing power-to-weight ratio and a traction advantage courtesy of the rear-mounted engine and a centrally locking diff. The 953, in the hands of René Met, beat the entire field winning the 1984 Dakar. So it makes sense now, right? In performance terms, this might be a better off-roader than an off-roader. I've got to tell you though, it feels super weird to be driving a 911 through an environment as punishing as this until you realize the thing's tough as nails. That's because the 911 Dakar is built to survive. It has sport suspension that increases its ride height to 50 millimeters more than the standard car and a four corner lift system that can raise it by a further 30 millimeters at speeds of up to 170 kilometers an hour. There are aluminum side sills and stainless steel plates along the front edge and at the rear offering extra protection from terrain. There are two solid red aluminum towing lugs, one at the front and one at the rear. 
The mesh on the front air intake reduces the chances of a smashed radiator from rogue projectiles, and the newly developed Pirelli Scorpion All-Terrain Plus tyres offer a 9mm profile depth and reinforced sidewalls while still being usable and apparently comfortable up to 240 kph. And the Dakar also comes with a spade. But not just any spade, this is a Porsche branded spade with a very fetching Porsche cover. But it's not just a Porsche branded spade, it's a Porsche branded spade that's also an axe and a saw. So you can pretty much dig yourself out of any sticky situation. It's all part of this amazing looking roof rack system which comes with some recovery boards to help you drive out of uneven ground plus two canisters, a 12 litre canister for water and a 10 litre canister for fuel. Don't get confused about which is which when you're thirsty in the desert and this very fetching Porsche bag. Lovely. The roof basket itself is designed to hold 40 kilograms of stuff and has a built-in 12 volt power supply that lets you connect auxiliary LED lights. But there's one more thing you can carry on the roof of the Dakar, yourself. The car comes with the option of a folding adjustable roof tent that pops out of a hard case on top. It's big enough for two people, it can hold up to 140 kilograms and has this adjustable ladder to allow you to get the perfect height. Then when you're up, you can cuddle in, look up at the stars, do that folding flap in the ceiling and get cozy with your favorite fluffy camel. No, no. Now, you might be wondering what the Dakar is like on the road. This is Eritrea, a town located on the southeastern border of Morocco, just north of the Western Sahara. The roads around here are quite mixed. A lot of it is fairly smooth, but there are also some potholes. Here comes one right now, right on cue. And that gives us an idea of the bandwidth that the suspension can offer. And I've got to say, it's quite impressive. It can pound around on the dunes and then in town, it settles down quite nicely. In terms of refinement, it's pretty good. I've got a Burmester sound system, which sounds great. I've got sat nav, I've got cup holders. Porsche say this is the only car that you can drive across an African safari, then to Le Mans to hit the track, and then to New York to take in a theater show. And you know what? They might be right. There's another advantage the Dakar has over almost everything else. It stands out. Everywhere you go, people will look. Even in this now very dusty shade green finish, kids will wave and even grown adults will give chase for a closer look. The Dakar is a showstopper. Porsche also offers the car in various liveries, harking back to specific periods of its involvement in the Dakar from 1971, 74 and 98 as well as a rally design package with the iconic blue and white paint finish and rough roads instead of Rothman's livery and white wheels. The latter costs an extra 20,000 pounds, but my preference is probably the shade green with the roof rack. Wind noise, especially with the roof rack, is something else that I thought I'd be concerned with. It's not so bad, really. Above 60, 70 miles an hour, you can hear it, but you get used to it so quickly. And honestly, you forget it's there. But anyway, Enough of this. The 911 Dakar is surprisingly good on the road, but where it excels is definitely out here on the rough stuff. Now I've been lucky enough to do some off-roading and Range Rovers here in Morocco actually, but this is absolutely a world away from that. And the major point of difference is that the Dakar is so much lighter. They've gotten rid of the back seats, you've got lightweight glass all around. You've got carbon fiber panels on the bonnet, which is from the GT3 RS. You've got a carbon fiber <laughs> rear wing. And the whole thing only weighs just over 1600 kilograms. That's only 10 kilograms more than the GTS. But that's a good ton less than the normal types of vehicles that you'd expect to be doing this kind of stuff. It can't go everywhere, but then neither can the KN that was on standby to rescue us if we got stuck. It's surprisingly capable and lets you pick your way around obstacles, covering ground quickly. It's so much fun, this thing, honestly. It's like a mountain goat. And it's got all the toys. It's got PDCC, it's got rear wheel steering. It's hilarious. Maybe the best thing about it, though, 
are the two new off-road modes. So it's got off-road mode, which maximizes your traction, but it's also got that rally mode, which turns it into a bit of a drift monkey. Honestly, most of the power gets sent to the rear wheels, which means when you find yourself out here on a loose surface and just nail it, you can go sideways for days. It's so much fun. It's deeply impressive. It shouldn't exist, and yet it does. It makes no sense, and yet it makes all the sense in the world. The most impressive thing about the Dakar is the fact that Porsche went out of its way to build it. It's the kind of car that, using conventional logic, shouldn't actually exist. It should be the stuff of Porsche's imagination, the stuff of fiction. And yet here it is, a reality that's also the stuff of dreams.